Well, today's project is a little land clearing way out there. There's my son, Caleb. Um, yep, a buddy of mine let me borrow this uh, 1978 International 500 Dozer. Just a uh, guy at work, and uh, the guy at work that got this, uh, the guy he got it from actually just gave it to him. He just told him, hey, we're selling this ranch, this, this dozer's out there, it doesn't start, you can have it. I'm like, gosh, dang, I wish I could have an, a deal like that, but can't complain too much. I mean, I got that Ford tractor for a you know thousand bucks, so I do get good deals every now and then too. So, little dozer, um, not much to it, but it's uh, total weight's about 10,500 pounds, I think somewhere around there. It's got a little four cylinder international motor in it. I just I didn't film it because the GoPro was dead and my phone was dead, but I got it real low on fuel the other day. And there's a fuel bowl down there. Fuel bowl filled up with kind of like a mud mix. It looked pretty bad. So anyway, we just cleaned it out. Me and Caleb got it done. I just pushed this stump out. So I'm gonna go back out there and push some more trees over. And then uh, the owner cactus. and some cactus. So the owner of this uh, dozer let me borrow it uh, doing a little horse trading and he's actually on his way out here he's going to run the dozer while i run uh, a skid steer and we do some clearing he's going to push stuff down and i'm going to use a skid steer to push y'all in a pile be a pretty good tag team but i can show you what how to operate this thing so um you got your forward reverse forward reverse and you got a little neutral lock there your key your key just turns it on and it looks like somebody has <clears throat> replaced the uh, lift pump with this uh, aftermarket electronic supply pump, which is pretty common. Those mechanical lift pumps don't do very good jobs. You know, they do when they're new, but they get any kind of trash in them, they mess up. But so anyway, you turn your key on. Your throttle here, if you see right here, it says idle and stop. So your idle is there and it'll stop. That kills it. So start it, run your RPM up, turn your key on, push your button. Just like that. Then it just makes kind of smoke. Yep. For a second. So let me crawl in here. And try not to hit it. So, it's a five speed. Hit reverse. You got your left track brake, your right track brake. You really don't even need to use your brakes. You got this one as your clutch, and this one's your clutch. So as you're going along, <clears throat> you pull this, this stops this track from going, and then that track keeps going so you, you move. You got your bucket controls here, your blade controls. You pull this back, blade goes up. Push it forward, blade goes down. Now if you go to the left, rotates, go to the right, rotates that way. And this lever over here, you push it forward, it swings that blade to the left, pull it back, swing it to the right. Hi guys. So we're gonna Stop that. And before I get the hate comments, you know, the 4,000 operators that have been operating equipment since they were two years old or all that bull crap. Yes, I checked the oil, check the fluids. I'm not going to include it in my video. Put more diesel in it. Put more diesel in it. I had that stuff. So, um, you know, I'm not going to do, a, I might do a separate how to operate. But anyway, that was a, uh, a real quick rundown of this. So I'm gonna start it up, get out there. We're gonna push some stuff down and then um, maybe I can talk my wife.
cruising this for a little while and the temperature is starting to creep up. <clears throat> so one of the worst things you can do when your temperature is creeping up is just shut it off. But see all this stuff in front of the radiator? I took that off. So the reason I did that, because um, I, I knew the cause of why it was overheating. It was overheating because this radiator was plugged up and that belt slipping a little bit needs to be replaced. With all this junk in the front, it couldn't get any ventilation across that radiator. So one of the worst things you can do for an engine overheating is if it's for a reason like that, is to just completely shut it off. Because what happens, you stop the circulation of coolant through the engine. And then the water that's inside the engine just gets hotter and hotter. And if it's over 220, 25 degrees, it's going to start boiling, you know, right around the cylinder head. When that happens, you can get some metal that it deforms. Um, now, on these old tractors and these old uh, engines, you know, where they're all uh, cast iron blocks, cast iron heads, it's, you don't have to worry about it that much because everything was just over engineered and overbuilt. <clears throat> but on new stuff, especially like a aluminum head, anything, anything with aluminum. You get it too hot, everything warps and you ruin the engine. So on machinery like this, a uh, really, really important thing, when you get done with it for the day or you're gonna take it off, don't just throttle it down, put your blade down and then kill the, uh, uh, the engine. You need to idle it down and you need to watch that temp gauge. A lot of times when you idle it down, the temp gauge will start going up. And that's because all the metal in the engine is still really hot. But the coolant going past it is going past it so fast it doesn't have enough time to pick up all the heat and dissipate the heat. So you watch that temp gauge and a lot of times, you know, you'll be running at like I say 190, 200. You shut it down, it'll start raising. And if it gets up around 220, you need to increase the RPM a little bit. That speeds out the water pump, speeds up the circulation to the block and the coolant through the radiator. And then once it starts going down, idle it back down until you see it, you know, just continually start dropping even in that idle. Once it drops all the way down to the island, bottoms out, then shut the machine off. But Caleb and I cleaned the uh, front of this radiator out. Looks much better now. I had the garden hose over here because I sprayed a little bit of water on it. Just a real fine mist, as fine as I can get, just to try to help cool the engine off uh, a little quicker. But like I said, on this old machinery, and even the new machinery, um, especially things with turbochargers, you don't want to just pull up, even your pickups, you don't want to just pull up after a long, heavy haul or a lot of work. And just shut it down it heat soaks the engine real bad and can uh, either uh, distort something warp something or you can end up um, uh, locking something up or just premature wear anyway hope that helps one of you guys so when we get motorcycle accidents like that does that pretty much mean the fire department's going out too okay i'm heading to the station no i'm heading to the station <laughs> 